too. He's fun to be around. Yeah, so. no, he's a good, he's a good kid. Yeah. Good kid. We had a really good set last week. Very intense. And so, I don't know what Dane thinks of this matchup, but uh, I have a feeling that uh, Tumbling struggles with characters that have significantly better functional range, but like Corn does. Corn is slow, so that should play at least some sort mm -hmm. of right. And in my experience, in the Duck Hunt Corn match. Specifically, trying to combo off of projectiles is actually very easy on Corrin compared to a lot of other characters just because weight, fall speed. That's a thing that I think is pretty common for a lot of the Fire Emblem characters in a lot of matchups, actually, because they also tend to be super vulnerable to, like, ding dongs and combos like that. And so that seems like it'll be the balance. Like, Corrin obviously has the range and hit, whereas if Bane can somehow manage to get his bombs in there, it could be real tough for Joy Killer. And both of these players actually just coming off rather tight sets. I know Joy Killer oh, yeah. just got taken to game three by our local Jigglypuff, 304. Yep. And Dane Reich was taken to game three by a Kirby, though he did play a Cloud, not his main yet. Yeah, I was curious if you were going to see that today. You are here, too. Okay, I like the uh, kick off stage. Just keep that safe. Dane not, not able to protect the ledge. Okay. Does get that jab three. Trying to set up the trap with the upward thrown bomb, but Joy Killer recognizing there would be enough time to roll and then walk away from it. Oh, falling there, starting a combo. Yep, up air out of shield. And it might be worth noting that Joy Killer actually earlier today did get to play against Yeti's tomb link. Obviously there are differences, but if he was just, you know, a little matchup ignorant, he definitely got some of that in. Really scary percent for tomb link here. Mm -hmm. Dane dodging all these aerials, though. Oh, man. Up air already almost killing. I know Toon Link's floaty, but wow. And that back air on the platform would have killed. Back air is a very strong area. That up air from Corrin, it's like the laziest kill move in the game. <laughs> it, not in terms of, like, as a player, but just like, like, ah. I feel like that one should have a Rosalina sound effect. Like same. That wow. same one, yeah, it's essentially. But Dane lying on the projectile pressure, okay. getting in. Yeah, and now we're at the point where bomb confirms at the ledge are terrifying for Joy Killer, especially with this rage. Oh, that, that pin will do it. It was important that he kicked forward. If he yep. had kicked backwards, it, Dane could have lived the eye incorrectly. And that's always a really weird move to the eye because you need the eye down. Um, that move is more likely to kill off the top than it is off the side. Okay. Let's see what kind of extra credit Joy Killer can find here. Ooh, that was scary. Dane still just boxing him out. Right, I'm, I'm a little curious about Corrin's aerial moves and how fast they are. The Nair frame 6, that's that's the best one. Active until 19. Up air is frame 7 through 12. I don't know, it's that active. Oh, Ooh, okay. I like the way it's trap. a good tech by uh, Ooh, you Dane. You gotta be scared yeah. there. Yep. Oh! Oh! Yeah. Wow, that was closer than I expected, honestly. I think he was fighting a platform momentum a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, I was equally worried for both of them because Dan had the back throw, but if Corrin or if Joy Killer caught him with the. Uh, Dragon Fang shot? That would have oh, been death, yeah. too. Yep. Okay, Nair's out of it. Ooh. Yeah, I don't think he really had anything to combo up from that distance anyway. We'll take that damage, obviously. But the immediate stage pressure he's taken away. Oh, okay. You can yeah, that didn't really work out for Joy Killer that well. No. But it was cool looking. And it is something just to try to catch people off guard, because there's like only one punishable frame after that counter. And it'll put the uh, a little bit of fear into Dane to run forward and bomb. Yeah. Because then he might just run into that counter, and he is mad dead to that counter if he gets hit by Dane it. Dane racking up damage. Joy Killer just staying yeah, at the ledge. So, you know what I actually thought Joy Killer might do there was jump counter into that bomb. But I don't Ooh. know if he was confident enough in the timing. Especially because. Yeah, that's it. There it is. Really strong comeback from Dane Reich. He stayed really calm at uh, a percent where basically anything from Corrin is terrifying. And he showed that if he can just keep Joy Killer at that just beyond medium range, not much Corrin can do to get through it. Yeah. And Joy Killer might have to start choosing options at the ledge. Because honestly, he went from 70 to dead yeah, just dangling there. Yeah, I think if Dane gives him another counterable projectile like that, Joy Killer needs to use it. The early strings out of Toon Link, up tilt nonsense. Uh, that back throw put the boomerang just high enough for it not to hit. <laughs> okay. And 
Jane seeming to, after that first game, be trying to push Destroy Killer off instead of, as I say that, up. Right. Because that's where he was capitalizing. Yeah, and when he tried to go for the more extended, like, multi-hit combos, all of a sudden there, nope, my combo now. Yeah. Not quite as bad as the Luigi combo, killing, er, combo steal there, but... But it does end at a very convenient angle for Yeah, especially that, that bottom hit box of it. But Dane, a solid percent lead already. Story Killer having trouble catching this little boy. Okay, that, that bomb, really unfortunate for Dane. Lost all that stage position. Story Killer catches the jump with the instant pin. Okay, I like that. Now it's Story Killer's time to start catching up. Yep, even on Battlefield, that'll do it. Oh! And the pins that Jeez. don't actually put you into the ground are so much scarier than the ones that do. And that would have killed with the rage that uh, Joy Killer had before that stock was taken, so. Toon Link sitting at 110. Dan Wright showed that he can play, you know, down, or not down, but high percents and not nervous, which is going to be important. That's a really good weight for Dan, because he would have been mad dead to that counter. But the back air takes it. You were calling that out. It's really strong. And it's safe because you get pushed away as corn. And this is where I think Dane is going to, uh, if he can keep Joy Killer just off to the ledge, capitalize like he was doing that first game, I think that's it's really hard for Joy Killer to deal with. Right, I think Troy Killer needs to be playing through center. And he doesn't seem to have a plan to get through the projectiles when he's down there. He wants to just wait it out, but Toon Link's just going to keep pulling bombs. Yeah, he's, he's trying to play this really patient. Ooh, scary. I don't think that would have killed from center, but it's it's too much like forward smash. Yeah. And <laughs> forward smash one is not as unsafe as it was, yeah. looks like it should be because you're afraid of forward smash two. Yeah, half the reason that you'll see Toon Link throw that out, especially when you see Yeti do it on the ledge, is to see what they're gonna do next. So Killer slowly bringing this back. Now he's got Dane in the juggling more so position. Okay. And Dane seems really fishy for these uh, forward smashes. But yeah, forward smash from Bane, tipper pin from Joy Killer. Lots of scary stuff going on right now. Or bomb fair, not quite. Using the back air from Stall. Should still oh, be able to get up. Okay, that hitbox lasting just long enough, and that bomb blows up in Bane's hands. Back throw Ooh, with a spot dodge. Going to be living for now, but Joy Killer's in a in a rough spot. Bane's looking for another back throw. Oh, oh, it's so fast. Wow. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good. And that little wait from Joyko before he threw it out made Dan think that he was out of the range yeah. of like, anything reactable. And least. the thing is, I'm not even sure that's a wait. I think that might just be the animation. Like, ah, sure. I thought he stalled a little bit before he threw it out, though, still. Maybe. Or maybe he's just a little rusty on the RARs. But regardless, that was a good kill. I mean, if he just... If, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Game three. Again, you know, the same thing that I was saying about Dane in game one, true about Joy Killer in game two. He did not panic. Yeah. And um and actually staying on the ledge kinda worked out for him. It, yeah, he figured out how to get through I think Dane was setting up less traps. Yeah. Because even though they weren't necessarily being fallen into, they were definitely doing some mental damage on Joy Killer. Right, and there. he would just stay on the ledge until invincibility ran out, and then we saw this early in game two, Dane just F tilted him off the ledge. So, Joy Killer at least aware that he has to do something. Yeah. Which, yeah. doing nothing is often a very good option in this game, but not always. Some characters, specifically those with holdable projectiles, can force you to pick an option. Okay. Calls out that jump, gets him stuck on the ledge again, jumps right to you. Nice little up kill back here combo, though. Two perfect shields and then an arrow to the, the sternum. Ooh, good tech. Oh, good mash from Dane, though. No kidding. And Dane just kind of keeping his space. Now I can just rack on an extra, you know, percent until he's comfortable that bomb fair is going to kill. This is pretty close to how game two started, no? It's, it's you're not wrong. Oh, Dane was actually, I think that was the one, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> nope. And it's 
way harder to roll through that than you think. Because yeah. the first hit uh, forward smash does have a very deceivingly behind hitbox. Not behind Toon Link entirely, but like on his body. So Bane putting on the projectile pressure and then just runs in for the grab. Once you get him in that mindset of I just have to keep holding shield. I mean, that's the rock, paper, scissors, right? Ooh, nice down air. Bane was setting up a forward smash. Rolls through the Dragon Fang shot, but it's hit by Bite anyway. Yeah. Okay, I like that setup a lot, actually. I'm blowing up just after Dane released it, still hitting him. And now Dane's at that scary present again. Mm -hmm. Oh, forcing that air dodge with that bomb throw. Very nice. Corrin doing some zoner stuff here. Okay. Toon Link throw follow-ups, what? Dane building up that percent. Joy Killer looking for this kill. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I thought that was going to set up for forward smash, but either way, it was big damage. Yeah, I think if Dan had expected a mistake, he would have gone for the arrow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, the hyper spacing. All right, now Joy Killer is pretty far behind, but yeah, that's he's also dead. JV2 for Dane. Yeah. But pretty, pretty tense set, all things considered. I would say so. Those are characters that even if you have them at 0%, you're still worried. Yep. Like, yep. they're going to put on 40% and then F-Smash you and you're dead. Or tip a pin off stage. Something. Apparently back air.